Well, today, the Supreme Court is set to hear arguments from a group of commercial fishermen who oppose a government fee they claim is unreasonable. For over 50 years, the federal government has mandated fishermen allow an observer to ride in their boats. That observer then reports back to the government on the quantity and kind of fish that are being caught. It's all to make sure no rules are being broken. But in 2020, the government passed a rule requiring the fishermen pay for that observer, which can cost upwards of $700 a day. And that fee must be paid even on the days no fish are caught. The fishermen sued and the case has worked its way through the appeals process. It's now before the highest court in the land asking the court to overturn the 40-year-old Chevron doctrine, which gives government agencies the final say in how laws and regulations are enforced. But there's another twist. The fishermen's lawyers who are working pro bono are from the Cause of Action Institute. And turns out court records show that the lawyers work for Americans for Prosperity, which is a group funded by billionaire Charles Koch. So joining me now is Harvard University professor Jody Freeman, who's also the director of the Environmental and Energy Law Program. <laughs> professor Freeman, thank you so much for your time. Uh, before we get into the entities behind this case, help break down what this case is about in, in simple terms we can all understand. Sure, Nicole. So on the surface, as you said, it's a case about fisheries regulation, but underneath it is the big question. And that's whether administrative agencies that regulate our food and drug supply and financial institutions and public health and safety, whether they can have some latitude when they interpret and enforce federal law. It's about whether they get to decide how to fill ambiguities and gaps in the laws they implement. And this case now before the court it was argued today, and it looks like the Supreme Court is open to overruling this old precedent, this old case that said, yes, agencies get some room when they implement federal law. All right, so Professor, you know, there are also even bigger implications here to talk about the entities helping to push this case forward and why they could be doing that. Well, it's clear that there are some fishing companies that don't like this rule. And of course, I should just mention that nobody's ever been required to pay for these onboard observers. There are all kinds of exceptions and caveats that make it something that isn't as burdensome as it's being made out to be. But it's still a rule, and they object to it. What's interesting is that the conservative movement is clearly behind this case and helped to tee it up for the Supreme Court hoping that the court would bite and that they would overturn this old precedent that the challengers, the conservative movement and the companies challenging the rule, they feel like federal agencies overregulate, that they're overzealous, that they're a huge behemoth imposing burdensome regulation on a liberty-loving people. Those are the sorts of phrases they use. And they're using this case as a vehicle to get the court to try to constrict and constrain federal agency regulation. And it looks today from the oral argument like the court is quite sympathetic. Okay, so we'll see. So, so tell us, Professor, what are the potential implications here if the fishermen win versus if they lose? So if the fishermen win and they get everything they want, the Supreme Court will essentially be saying federal agencies do not have the power to read into the ambiguities in laws. So it's going to be up to the court to determine all of the interpretive questions that come up when you regulate all of the things that federal agencies regulate. And the bottom line, Nicole, is just it's a massive swing of power to the Supreme Court to determine a lot of policy questions that normally the executive branch and the president get a chance to determine. So the case is about power. It's not really about fish. And it looks like the Supreme Court might come out of this as the most powerful policymaking institution in America. And before we let you go here, I mean, you say this about it's about power. It's not really about fish. I mean, how often is it that we were that we would see in a case that has now made its way to the Supreme Court, uh, these lawyers working pro bono? Well, we see a lot of conservative movement lawyers now teeing up a series of cases to this conservative Supreme Court. And so it's really quite common um, beneath the cases that have plaintiffs that look very sympathetic. In this case, the fishermen look quite sympathetic. In another case from last year, we had property owners, the Sackets, who look very sympathetic. Behind them often is a well-financed conservative agenda. All right, well, we will certainly see what happens, uh, what, the, what the court ends up deciding. Harvard professor Jody Freeman, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.